Hey guys and welcome to my video tutorial on how to build a space shuttle in Kerbal Space Program. My goal is to teach you something and if you really feel like learning new stuff, please let me know. Thanks. Just in case you don't know how a space shuttle works, it is a space plane which is mounted on a gigantic fuel tank. The tank itself has no engines at all and just feeds the one on the shuttle which are completely overpowered for the plane itself. The reason for that is to reuse the expensive engines. My plan now is to build the shuttle entirely in the hangar to then save it as a sub-assembly and mount it on the fuel tank in the VAB. Ok, I hope you're ready, let's go! I begin the plane using a strut to have a small sized mounting point which doesn't interfere with my design. You can pretty much build whatever you like on top of it. The key however is to angle the engine slightly. You can achieve that by mounting them on a strut as seen in the video. The reason for this is quite simple. A straight firing engine mounted on the side causes an angular momentum around the center of mass. Your shuttle would start spinning mid-air. To avoid that we have to align our thrust vector with our center of mass and this is done by angling the engine. We can fine tune this later at the VAB by sliding our plane up and down on the tank. Before I mount the wings I make sure everything else is added so my mass won't change anymore. I add the payload which is a small and important satellite for our daily communication. The RCS you see is needed to maneuver in space. The real shuttle uses monopropellant for circularization, maneuvering and deorbiting. The main engines are no longer in use after the fuel tank separation. Don't forget the wheels, I place the back ones a little higher than the ones in the front to create a natural upwards lift on the runway. This is not necessary making the shuttle but is quite useful building other planes. Ok, time for our first test. We have to make sure this thing can glide and land to the runway. Yes, the shuttle is a pure glider. And here we go, take off. Ok, now flip it back where we are coming from. Yep, I think that's it. A buttery smooth landing. Now a few finishing steps. I make sure everything is assigned to action groups so I can toggle it on and off quickly. The last step now is to save it as a sub-assembly. We finished here, let's move on to the VAB. There is the fuel tank. I mount the space shuttle onto a radial decoupler so nothing sticks to it after separation. This could cause some serious trouble landing on the runway. As you can see one fuel tank is simply not enough to match our thrust vector. 
I use a second one, which I have to empty to keep the center of mass as high as possible. This has two reasons. First, the lift our wings generate has to be below the center of mass to keep the rocket stable, like a plane. Second, the more distant our engines from the center of mass are, the bigger the impact their thrust vectoring has. This is important, because the center of mass will change during ascent, as the tank empties. The last thing to add is a pair of boosters, of course. And we are ready for our first test. See you at the launch pad. Now fasten your seatbelts, guys. 3, 2, 1 and lift off! Now look at that, it flies upwards. This is exactly what I was expecting, of course. Before we start to cheer, however, let's wait what happens after our booster separation. I feel we are not yet finished. And... Bo oh, it worked, of course. We can now focus on turning our space shuttle slowly to gain more horizontal speed. Oh, wait a second. Our space shuttle is starting to rotate. But as you can already imagine, this is totally planned. Our pilot has trained that many times and can safely return to the runway. But what happened here? As I have mentioned earlier, the center of mass changes during flight. We have to counter this rotation somehow. As you might have noticed, the real space shuttle has three engines, while we use only two. There is a very good reason for this. Adding a third engine, we can aim its thrust below the center of mass and therefore counter the angular momentum resulting in a perfectly aligned total thrust vector. This sounds very complicated, but is in fact very simple. I will show it to you in the VAB in just a second. And here we are. I do simply copy one of our engines and place it between the two. I also angle it a little more, so the thrust aims below our center of mass. I can tune our resulting total thrust during flight using the thrust limiter by right clicking the engine. And that's it guys. Our space shuttle is now ready for its true maiden flight. I hope you are as excited as I am. And lift off, lift off of our Kerbal space shuttle. Let's now enjoy the ascent. That happens if you turn your third engine off instead of limiting the thrust. Don't worry, our pilot knows what he is doing. And we are now stable again. I hope you are ready for space guys. We rotate the shuttle before fuel tank separation to make sure its suborbital trajectory will not cross ours while we are coasting to our upper apses where we will circularize our orbit. We are officially in orbit now and can finally release our valuable payload. The last thing on our checklist now 
is to deorbit and land at KSC again. You can do it in many different ways and I show you mine. I start my deorbit burn roughly a quarter of an orbit before I fly over my destination. There is not much room for error because we purely glide to the runway. This should do it. We come in a little too far to the south and we can try steering during re-entry. The real shuttle does such a maneuver too in order to lose as much speed as possible in the upper atmosphere. This looks not too bad guys, I think we will do it. I really hope you enjoyed this video and to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.